This week on Engineering Newswire, we're designing the world's fastest motorcycle, protecting future Martian colonists, and building one big, big dog. DARPA has released video of its new and improved quadruped, the Legged Squad Support System, or LS3. The freaky looking robotic prototypes nicknamed Big Dog were built by Boston Dynamics which was awarded $32 million by DARPA for the project. LS3 was first conceived as an autonomous support pack robot carrying heavy gear for troops over rugged, varying terrain and responding to verbal and visual commands. It can carry up to 400 pounds or more of payload, sustain itself for 24 hours and cover up to 20 miles in almost any kind of terrain. Among the new improvements is reduced operating noise, operating at nearly one-tenth the decibel level as the original version, allowing soldiers walking next to it to carry on a regular conversation. Forget the pony I asked for for my birthday when I was 10. I want to upgrade to this robotic steed. This one is just cool. Motosis set out to build the world's fastest motorcycle, but they have made other landmarks along the way. The company has already created an incredibly fast, aerodynamic, all-electric motorcycle that became the first American bike to win the Isle of Man race, a feat not achieved by an American cycle in 99 years. Interestingly enough, it was the Sis family that won it last time as well. Now, Moto Sis is setting their sights on the world motorcycle land speed record. Starting with the old school approach, using simple sketches, the team insists that part of the engineering and problem solving DNA is based in the aesthetics. The bike in its current state already had aerial copter cameras struggling to keep pace, and the next generation will be attempting the speed record in the spring of 2013. A group of dedicated engineering students from San Jose State University is attempting to build a self-balancing electric motorcycle. The new bike has a spherical drive system that is like nothing you see on the road today. The project was born on the idea of having a vehicle that could travel in any direction. With that idea came one necessity, the team needed to reinvent the wheel. Using a friction-based system that directly drives the sphere surface, the vehicle could achieve true omnidirectional maneuverability. The bike stands similar to a Segway. It will use accelerometers and gyros for detecting the pitch angle and correcting for any displacement. Uh, but for the scope of the project, the, pro uh, the prototype will travel between 5 and 10 miles per hour to get the initial controls right. But based off of the gear ratios, this thing could possibly go 60 miles an hour. And hey kids, if in the event that you need a test driver, I'm in. A team of Stanford engineers has demonstrated the feasibility of a super small, implantable cardiac device that isn't powered by batteries, but rather radio waves transmitted from outside the body. The implanted device is contained in a cube just 8 tenths of a millimeter in radius. The researchers have demonstrated wireless power transfer to a millimeter sized device implanted 5 centimeters inside the chest on the surface of the heart, a depth once thought out of reach for wireless power transmission. Existing mathematical models have held that high frequency radio waves do not penetrate far enough into human tissue, requiring low frequency transmitters and large antennas that are too large for implantable devices. But this team has proven those models wrong. Human tissues dissipate electric fields quickly, it is true, but radio waves can travel as alternating waves of electric and magnetic fields. With the correct equations in hand, high frequency signals travel much deeper than anyone success suspected, without skipping a beat. On Earth, the atmosphere and magnetic field weaken cosmic rays. On Mars, they rain down uninhibited. This cosmic radiation can harm astronauts as well as future Mars colonists by causing cancer after prolonged exposure damages DNA in cells. Folks at the Biophysics Department at GSI in Germany think they may have found a better solution. When it comes to space travel, every gram matters and transporting building materials from Earth could cause a cost explosion. This is why ground stations, and their shielding in particular, could be built with Martian regolith. Regolith is a layer of loose material that covers solid rock up at the Red Planet. And based on tests performed by the Mars rover, GSI will be able to reproduce the red rocks on Earth and run additional property testing. This will help determine whether or not the stone slabs could be more cost effective and safer. 
The cosmic rays are nothing more than fast ions that were accelerated by star explosions. And GSI's facility just happens to be the one of the few that in, in this entire world that can uh, reproduce cosmic rays in an original way. Who would want to be a mere rocket scientist when you could simulate star explosions? Do you have story ideas for the next episode? Comment below or email us with your story ideas and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire.